Yo, listen up everybody, this is the number one TV show in the history of the universe, and I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, we are going to be reviewing The King Beyond the Gate by David Gemmel. This is book number two in his... Um, Drenay series uh, came out in 1985, and uh, let's dive into the review first. Let's just talk about the cover. Um, I think the Drenay series is 10 or 12 books deep, and I've got the entire... Well, yeah, let's we'll talk about the cover in a second. Let's go down here to where I keep all of my um, David Gemmel books. You and my massive library. We've got the David Gemmel books clear down here on the bottom. That's my David Gemmel collection right there. You can see I've got all of them. Anyway, just got to show that off. I actually think I did a video about my David Gemmel collection. If you want to watch that video, just type in my last name, Durfee, and David Gemmel. The video will magically appear upon your computer screen. Now, I've also reviewed book number one in the Drenay series, which was just called Legend, about Druss the Legend. This one, King Beyond the Gate, is about other characters in that world. In fact, the entire Drenay saga are all filled with standalone books. Now, it's best if you kind of read them in order of publication. However, it's not necessary because each one of them has different characters and standalone in themselves. Let's talk about the cover. This was done by, by one Louis Royo. Louis Royo has done a shit ton of fantasy covers, science fiction covers, even westerns. Um, but anyway, it's a cool cover. He's really a great artist. It's a cool looking book. Um, now, David Gemmel, stylistically, his writing, and I've said this, I said this 30 years ago when I was back when I was first reading. David Gemmel novels in the 80s and reading a lot of Louis L'Amour. David Gemmel and Louis L'Amour, they've almost got the same writing style. and the, 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 Their prose is almost identical. And I stick by this. And not only am I right about this, but David Gemmel confirmed I was right in an interview when he said his favorite writer in the planet was Louis L'Amour. And he really tried to stylize his own writing after Louis L'Amour. And I, I spotted that early on. And I've... Even in some of my Goodreads reviews of this, I've mentioned that it's a lot like Louis L'Amour. And you've always got one moron, internet moron, that he's nothing like Louis L'Amour. You are so fucking stupid. How could you even... And I'm like, listen, I'm right. And then I read the article where David Gemmel himself said he writes exactly like Louis L'Amour on purpose. And I was proved right. I'm right about a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. But I'm also wrong about a lot of stuff, too. Anyway, uh, the prose is like Louis L'Amour. Um, no, it's not an exact... It's kind of a little bit like Robert E. Howard, too. It's very Conan-esque. Actually, if you were to mix Louis L'Amour, Robert E. Howard, and even Bernard Cornwell together, you would get David Gemmel. So this book is about Tenneke Khan and the history of his life, kind of. Um, actually, we get the uh, very, very, the first few chapters are a pretty detailed history of what it was, what he was, his growing up and all that. And he, he goes on a quest in this book. He gets, this is a very quest-oriented book. He, he gathers up companions to go on the journey. Um, and then they use a phrase, a phrase, I, they, you know, maybe, maybe not only does David Gemmel li write like Louis L'Amour, but he also might write a little bit like George Lucas because there's a phrase that the characters say over and over and over in this book. And the phrase is, may the source be with you. And I'm thinking this came out in 1985. So clearly, clearly Star Wars came out before the, I mean, the, may the source be with you. That sounds familiar to me. I mean, it's one word off from, you know, but anyway, I just found that strange. Anyway, I love David Gemmel books. He's a super writer and his, these books are just grim, gritty, action-packed fantasy novels for adults. They're absolutely great. Um, rather than butcher up my review anymore, I'm going to read the back and kind of tell you a little bit. Um, times have changed. 
Once the mighty fortress had stood strong, defended by the mightiest of all Drenay heroes, Druss the Legend. And book number one in the Drenay saga was about Druss the Legend. Um, but now a tyrannical mad emperor has seized control of the fortress, and his twisted will has carried throughout the land by his creatures the joinings, abominations that were half human, half beast, sort of like the Urukai in Lord of the Rings. And may the source be with them. Descended from a long ago political intermarriage between enemies, Tenaka Khan was a half breed himself. He was an outsider, hated by the Drenay for his nadir blood, and despised by the nadir for his Drenay ancestry. But he alone had a plan to destroy the emperor. A handful of heroes joined together with Tenaka Khan to carry through this bold plan. But to trust him would be also mean that the Drenay must trust their greatest enemy. So anyway, yeah, you can see there's a, there's a very quest-oriented book. They go off on an adventure to figure out and find different things, and then they go, they, they, things are, you know, battles happen, and uh, lots of action and adventure. I love the Drenay series. Um, again, each book is only about 250 or 300 pages. You can sit down and read this in the afternoon, which I did the other day. I sat down after work, had a couple hours to kill, knocked out this 300 page book. I read about 100 pages an hour, so something like this is pretty easy for me. Um, breezed through it. It's not hard reading. It is, it is R-rated, so if you're going to think of giving this to your nine-year-old child, you know, maybe not. Um, other than that, I give this probably a solid eight out of ten. Uh, book number two in the Drenay series, The uh, King Beyond the Gate, came out in 1985. A good addition to, um, David Gemmel's massive legacy of great, great fantasy novels.